Welcome back, continuing off from the last video. A little more excited now, I'm gonna put some parts on. Um, if you didn't watch the last video, I literally, I'm literally just getting back from a four month deployment in Africa and unboxed tons of parts. I got all types of stuff going on here, but tonight I wanna get some things in. I still have yet to even jump my car, my car's dead. I wanna get these parts on and go for a nice little drive around town real quick tonight. But um, a lot of the stuff's, all of it's easy. The most involved is gonna be the shift boot and knob. But I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna throw in the racing line oil cap real quick, easy. Uh, fast charger, very simple. Pedal spacer from WCT. Uh, I believe it's just one screw and it should really help with heel towing. Uh, we got the new boost tap. Uh, I'll be using this for when I go to a five bar manifold sensor and of course you got three vacuum lines now instead of one with the APR and I'll be giving the APR one away um, once I get all these parts installed and whatnot I'll have all types of stuff to give away so we'll get there when we get there and of course we got the uh, golf ball knob I waited like three years to finally pull the trigger and buy this thing but uh, and we got the blue shift boot and this blue stitching will match the blue stitching on the steering wheel I'm going to order once China is uh, not on lockdown anymore. So, let's get started. Actually, I apologize in advance for crappy lighting. I'm gonna try and do the best I can. Like I said, my car's still dead. I don't wanna jump it just yet. Um, so when I'm doing interior stuff, I'll do as best as I can. Uh, put the camera on tripod, tripod, tripod. We'll get into the engine bay real quick. Do the oil cap, do the boost tap, hop inside, do this pedal spacer, and then the uh, shift boot and knob. Now this, might be the most difficult part of everything that we're doing today. So I'll take this one off. It's a little, a little dirty. Take this. Oh, girl. That pop, though. Oh, God, yes. That is good. That goes on. Of course, I got, I have the oil filter housing as well to put on, but I'm not ready to do that yet. Of course, we got I want all my racing line because they, ch they changed their emblem or their, their logo. So this is the new one. This is the old one. I got this. This is the new one. Old one. Old one. Old one. Like, I got mixed match thing. New one. Like, but uh, anyway, while we're in the area, we're going to pop this old APR uh, boost tap off and put in the Precision Raceworks, which will match the Precision Raceworks fuel rail and the ethanol sensor. First things first here, we'll pull the vacuum line off, which I just did. Now we'll grab um, two open end wrenches, one to hold it here, one to hold it here and split this baby apart. And then there's threads and it'll just, it'll just pull apart. Very easy. So here we got a 19 on the big side, 15 on the small side. We'll Or as you unscrew it, it might get stopped on the manifold here. You have to kind of wiggle it forward and continue to screw it off. Boom. There you go. It's a very simple. Goes on. This is actually hooked to the manifold. This is not. It's got some seals in there. It screws together. Eventually, you know, put your tap on, you're done. Very simple. I'll be giving this away. Um, yeah. There we go. So this is a very simple setup. This will go into the manifold. The clip will clip it in. And you have your choice of using one, two, or three. Um, you know, whatever. I'm going to throw... See, these come with caps on them. I'm going to throw a zip tie on each one of the two that I'm not using. And obviously, I'll be using this one for the tap. Make sure it fits in the hose. Um, tighten this guy down right here where the five bar boost sensor uh, will go manifold pressure sensor whatever you want to call it and we'll, we'll throw it right in so I'm going to throw some zip ties on and we'll toss it on took a set of these bad boys just grabbed on and gave them a good good tighten on each one uh, doing it by hand they stayed kind of loose looser than I'd like don't want any uh, vacuum leaks, leaks or boost leaks so got these on there gave them a good good one two Good and tight. 
and now we'll throw it on. It's a nice little piece. I love blue, so boom. All right, as you can see there, this is where the tap goes, okay? And there's a lip right here. That lip, this is gonna have to get pushed on, like where the clip goes in, needs to be past that lip. So it's gonna fight you probably a little bit, but uh, you need to get it past that, throw the clip on, you'll be good to go. Boom. Heard that click? I made it past that spot I was just talking about. So I'm gonna throw this on, make sure it doesn't move. I'm trying to get this on, it's really hard to do with just your thumb, so I'm trying. Here's this little extension here. Oh, there we go. Now she's on. Wow, that's a tight fit. Jesus. Well, that definitely ain't going nowhere. All right, now you guys can see where the clip went on. Like I said, you got to get it past the little uh, notch that was there. But now this baby's on. And let's see, the distance between here, this is where the five bar sensor is going to go. So I might actually have to put a notch in my air box here. I don't know. I don't have the sensor yet, obviously. But I don't think there's enough room for the sensor and the clip that goes to it. I guess we'll see. I might have to notch this. All in the name of Mole Pile, baby. It looks nice. I'm a sucker for blue. Um, I got like blue everything. Blue car, blue things. Love it. All right, now we'll get to the uh, pedal spacer. That looks good though, it looks really good. All right, next up is this pedal spacer. It seems it'll be pretty easy. See how, I don't know, video doesn't really do it justice, but this, I mean, it's way off. Like these need to be way closer to being even and this is what this is for, to help bring this pedal up some. So to do that, it's literally one screw and maybe a connector. So you got an electrical connector. You see that guy right there? You pull this down a little bit and can see the one screw. So we'll take that one screw out, pop this assembly off, see if we have to do the electrical connector. Throw this in there and uh, put it back on. Should be pretty simple. All right, so it is a T25. I'm gonna try and push this back here a little bit so I don't lose the screw. It's kind of tight. We'll get in here and... Boom. Oh yeah, way easy. See that notch? Not really a notch, but there's like that indent, that little hole. Should be about dead center of the screen. This has this little nipple that's gonna go in there. So it's gonna... Pop right in there, and then you put your screw back on. Okay, it's sitting in there. Let's take a look. It sits in there all by itself. You see the other side has a notch, because this side has a, a nipple as well on the pedal. Ooh, right there, that'll go in that hole. Nice fucking fit, there we go. So the top of the pedal goes in first, kind of like swings in there. Carpet out of the way. And the pedal will stay up there by itself without the screw. So, all right, a little more about the pedal spacer. So it was like probably well over a year ago. I saw this product uh, posted to the MQB page, and it really caught my interest. If you go on the website, and I'll drop, I'll have the link down in the description. Read some of the comments. People say amazing things about it, even though it's just that much closer. Um, it's supposed to like really make a difference. Even the DSG guys are saying it makes a difference. This isn't just for heel toe manual guys, but um, if you're on the big MQB page on Facebook, which you should be, because if you're, there's like 20,000 members on there, just type in a WCT and just read all the posts about it. People are raving about it. So I caught the hype and I'll let you know what I think about it. I'm about to get the car and feel how it feels just that. I'm gonna do my shifter and shift boot and then we're gonna go for a drive and I'll let you know what I think. Um, off the bat. Now it might be a little biased or a little off because I literally I haven't driven my car yet. It's been since like November 5th ish since I drove my car. I literally got back from my deployment like a couple hours ago. My car is dead. I haven't even jumped the car yet. So just getting some parts installed before we before we go for our first drive. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I wanted to just get some parts on before I went for a drive. Anyway, Let's get to the shifter. 
All right, first things first, you gotta pull this trim off. Just grab it from the back. You can feel there's like a notch there and a notch there. You just boop, lift this baby up. I have mine wired together. You will have like some crazy looking clip that is a pain to try and use some cutters on. I wound up taking a uh, Dremel to it and cutting it. Then you got this plastic doohickey that mine's all chewed up. Um, I took some scribes and shoved them up in these notches. I don't know if you can really see them. Up in these notches and I also took a Dremel to it to get it off originally. I had a different knob on here and it didn't last very long. So as for right now, I'm just going to I shouldn't even have to, I should just, oh, yeah, boom, it's off. <laughs> so we'll go inside, we'll take this apart. Um, it comes with new adhesive and all that. This this plastic piece comes in two. And we'll put the new boot on and uh, the new knob. Should be exciting. I'm excited. All right, so we're here with our limp friend. <laughs> um, you can see all these little clips here. Could probably do it with my fingers actually get them in there press them out that was a lot more simple than I imagined I was gonna have to use other things so this comes off then you have this black piece um, yeah see you got staples in it and there's some adhesive so we'll have to pull these staples out and uh, it's kind of like glued on there and then we'll fit the new one on top it comes with uh, this is a little roll of adhesive, if it would focus. And it'll go around the perimeter, and we'll stick it on. It does go on a specific way. We'll see at the shape of this, it kind of tapers forward. It gets wider as it goes back, thinner as it goes forward. So it's only going to go on one way, and of course you want your... Well, it only goes on one way, so it doesn't matter. shouldn't take too, too long. We'll pull out these staples and uh, let it rip. Got this neat little set of tools. I actually won at a car show on base one year. So what I did, I took these cutters, I went across, across and cut each one in half. And then I'll go from the back and just kind of bend and pull them out. All right, so that was very tedious, getting the uh, staples out. From the videos I've seen before, there's adhesive, but this one, I guess they just decided to use staples, and then in the corners here, here they have these little pins, like for the leather, which would have been nice if they did that for this. It must have been some type of revision or something, but that's pretty dope. I don't have to deal with any adhesion to at least get it off. Alright, so I laid down the sticky stuff, and then we can just kind of... Peel it off, and then we'll lay the boot on. Now this cage does seem pretty fragile. I would say be careful with it. It flexes like super easy. Um, definitely be careful. Wouldn't want to break this in the middle of, you know, having your shifter off. So we got the boot on. Only thing I can really say is. When you're putting it on, you want to make sure that this leather is not sticking past the plastic brim. So you got your little clips, and then the you want it dead even with it. I had this side a little bit sticking out, and it wouldn't fit into this right. So I kind of had to unstick it and redo it, and the sticky stuff's really sticky. And when you pull this material, it will stick to it, and then now it's not sticky at the places I had to pull it off. So try and be careful. Get it as even as possible. And it should be good to go. Now we'll clip it in and go from there. All right, so here's what I've done. I watched a video or two that no one really shows for this specific knob. It's a little bit different because uh, it doesn't have an adapter that it threads into and stuff. The, the holes are like in the shifter itself, which is kind of, eh, I don't like that. I wish it was just a threaded body and then you, you know, put that piece on, on there and whatever. Um, so there's three, so there's three spots where the set screws go in, but you got to get the zip tie. This is like a little notched area right here where the zip tie goes. And I'm afraid if I put the zip tie on, 
I won't be able to get this down far enough to get the screws in. So we're going to play around. I got at least two zip ties that the kit came with. If not, I'll use my own, even though they'll be a bit bulkier. You see how the end piece is here. So I'm going to throw this on and see if I still got room to put the set screws in. If not, chop it off. Use the other one. Do the set screws first on the car and then the zip tie. So I got the zip tie on. Made a couple little relief cuts here. It was pretty much impossible without. And uh, I got the screws in with some blue Loctite all around. We're going to go position it on the car and do little, like, half turn, half turn, half turn, half turn, and just keep going around until it's nice and tight. They provided a nice Allen key to go with it. And then we should be almost done. Get that on, pop this down, and uh, put the coin in. I'm excited. The weight difference from from this golf ball knob to this from the from the stock is crazy 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 and I just love the blue stitching it looks so freaking good and I can go for a drive so you got your three set screws just going around giving a little turn for each one turn 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 and then you get them nice and snug and then you'll just push your boot back down and get it all tidied up I'm about to crank mine down now, finally. I got them kind of tight, put the whole thing down, made sure everything was aligned, looked good, felt right, and then uh, I just lifted it back up. Now I'll sink them down for, for good, hopefully. She's all in and on. Just need to put the coin on, but... Oh. It feels good. I like it. I like it a lot. Looks great. That blue will go perfect with my steering wheel once I get it. Mm. Mm -mm. All right, let's go grab this coin. Check that out. I love that. Looks good. Height's perfect. Feels great. Weight is awesome. My camera sucks at focusing. I didn't even actually put the coin in yet, though. Just kind of set it there. We'll take the adhesive off and throw it on. Boom. Lovely. Man, it's perfect. All right, well, it's like 4.30 in the morning. I'm finally going to pull the roommate's car in, get my car jumped. I got to pull the fuel pump stuff and dry crank it a few times, get the oil through the motor, and then we'll start her up and let her rip. Go for a lap around town. I'm excited. Sun's going to be up soon. I should probably go to bed, but I got like the next two and a half weeks off to fix my sleep schedule. So I'll let you guys know about how this pedal feels. Oh, well, it already feels better. Just like this. Nice. All right, let's go for a drive. Well, turns out I couldn't jump the car at all. Tried two different vehicles. Battery was just completely shot. Uh, to had uh, my roommate take me over to Advance. Got a new battery. This went for my first drive. Stopped at Walmart. Walmart's definitely not as bad as they make it out to be. Really, um, there's plenty of water. There was no toilet paper though at all. I, I didn't need any anyway, but. I got a bunch of shit that I came for. They had steak, they had potatoes, they had juice, water, milk, snacks, good to go. Frozen meals, all types of shit. It's so weird driving this car though, like, when I was in Africa there for months, all the trucks that we had to get to and from work were manual diesels. So, you know, they're slow as shit, the engagement point in the clutch is high as hell, and the shifter, you know, is just sloppy as, all oh, sloppy, so sloppy. And it's getting out. I about stopped the car like 17 times already. Every time I stop, I'm about because the clutch engagement on this is just is right off the floor. So it's super weird for me. Uh, just probably just take me a couple days to get used to it again. But goddamn, like my first little baby pool I did was like 15 pounds of boost. And I about shit my freaking pads. That felt so good. And I took the next road, hit like uh, I think it was like 29 pounds. It felt so nice. I forgot how this car felt. Took a couple corners, man. It's going to take me a while to, to get used to this again, but damn. I really wish there was autocross this weekend. That would really get me like right back into it, but we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. All right, well, first thoughts on the pedal spacer. It makes a difference. I was trying to figure out why I couldn't like, because I'm so used to just doing like regular downshift rep matching, just tapping the gas real quick as I'm downshifting, and I was like, way over shooting the revs or the, the gas you know whatever you want to call it and uh just going off from a start i was giving a you know a little bit too much gas combination of the pedal spacer 
and not being used to the car. Definitely not even, definitely, definitely not used to the clutch at all right now. So it's going to be a couple days until I really get the feel for the car again, then I can go through and uh, start trying to heel toe now with the pedal spacer. But I'll definitely, I'll make like a short video in a couple of weeks or after the first race event and let you guys know exactly what I think of that, uh, that pedal spacer. So look out for that whenever that time comes. But as for the shifter, holy shit. If you've been, if you're in a manual car and you've been, and you're still rocking the stock shifter, go ahead, go to BFI, pick out one of their nice, fancy looking shift knobs and a boot to match of your color, or just keep the soft, you know, whatever. You won't regret it. It's very nice. It feels so good in the hand. I really like the the feel of the golf ball. Like it gives me something to twitch with when I'm driving, but it feels really nice. The weight isn't extreme, but it's like way more than stock. Uh, I know there's some like race snag shifters out there that weighed almost two pounds. I feel like that might be too much, but I have no idea. I've never felt one myself, but um, let's see. Yeah, my Mark IV, I always rocked a stock shifter. And this one, I had another shifter from another brand once upon a time. And the set screws came loose. I mean, it, it weighed quite a bit more. But the design was a little bit different, but you know, it was blue. It did look pretty, but... Um, I was supposed to get a revised version of that. I don't remember what happened. Either way, this shifter is nice. It's very, very nice. And you got Black Force Industries. They've been in the game for a very long time. Um, I'm going to try and get a custom coin made for that top portion. We'll see what I can do about that. But uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend it. It's definitely a nice piece. Um, that's all I got for now. I am literally just got dressed. I'm about to go put more car parts on the car. Do my... Pad sensor delete, my new wheel speed sensor, see if the rear spacers fit, and do the uh, actual dog bone arm from 034. And then I'm gonna go for a drive, uh, warm the motor up, do the new brisk plugs and turbo blanket maybe, possibly do the uh, oil filter housing as well. I need to get a, a socket that fits that first. So uh, I'm looking, at, looking out for that video in the next week or so. You guys should be seeing this Monday, so that video will be out Thursday. And then I think tomorrow or Saturday I'll be starting on doing all the brakes. And then uh, hopefully this lightweight battery shows up soon. And then we can do a real nice uh, weight comparison for the different batteries, the brakes set up, and then we'll go, we'll ride up to the truck stop and get the car on the scales, see what she weighs. So maybe, maybe I should weigh it now and then see what it is after the battery and the brakes and the other goodies that's coming, so maybe. We'll see, if I get bored enough, I'll go up. But anyway, um, links for the stuff is in the description down below. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and I'll catch you on the flip flop.